In the previous lesson, we introduced the the subject of the executive branch of government. We talked about the relationship the executive branch has with parliament. We talked about who forms the executive branch, the relationship between the prime minister and the other ministers of state. Now, in this lesson, what we're essentially going to do is focus some of our attention on the arguably the most important figure within the executive branch of government. And that, of course, is the prime minister. We'll talk about the role of the prime minister in this lesson. And then in future lessons, we'll talk about the powers that the prime minister has, as well as theories of executive power, which does get into some of the kind of political theory, political science that you would study if you ever go on to do uh, go to do politics at university which is very interesting so previous lesson we introduced the executive branch as i said of the uk government and the position of the prime minister now thinking about the role of the prime minister is a very interesting task because it's not like that of the united states where we have a presidency whose roles and powers and functions and authorities are clearly defined in the constitution and the way in which that power and authority has changed has has been something of an interesting um, thing to look at but is still not something that has strayed significantly away from the roles that were codified by the constitution the same thing can't necessarily be said about the prime minister given the fact that the position of the prime minister comes out of the historical tradition and development of uh, of the political system that we have today within the broader context of the executive therefore and in today's common understanding the prime minister is said to have six main roles these roles again are not set out in statute law they are just more like uh, constitutional conventions as well as historical traditions things that have developed out of history the first of these main roles that the prime minister has relates to political leadership the Prime Minister is the head of the government, and the Prime Minister therefore decides the political direction that is taken by the government. That seems to make a lot of sense. They set government's priorities, and they also set the broader strategy of government. This is usually done within the context of larger teams, so often it is not a Prime Minister acting on their own uh, in making these broader uh, policy and priorities based strategy based decisions but rather it is done within larger teams of political advisors as well as ministers but while this is the case and while this is absolutely true uh, the Prime Minister still has the final decision when it comes to any of these decisions that we talk about when it comes to uh, their role within the political process this is part of the prime minister's role as being the leader of the party and the leader of government so we have to make it very very clear that they have a certain degree of political leadership essentially the book stops with them when it comes to making decisions stretching out even more broadly we can say that the prime minister also has a certain degree of national leadership the prime minister is the predominant political figure in the united kingdom and actually provides national leadership in times of crisis when we have issues relating to uh, major crises within the united kingdom the media will focus mainly on the prime minister in times of crisis now think about this when we can look at some very recent examples examples the most recent example and the largest example of national crisis of course was the coronavirus pandemic which begins uh, which begins at the the start essentially of 2020 uh, but formally reaches its point where we get to the 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 constitutionality and the passing of legislation related to the lockdowns uh, in sort of mid to late march of 2020 now you remember and you uh, those of you who are studying politics now will sh will probably remember the fact that the prime minister at the time who was Boris Johnson would uh, take the de facto role of the national leader of the uh, of during this crisis they would be on tv i believe it was at one point every single night 
to update every single individual relating to the the pandemic, the figures, the facts, what was going on, the kinds of policies, and they would do so uh, with a number of, of of medical advisors, people like Chris Whitty, for example. This was a, seen to be the case in the sense that the prime minister was viewed as the national leader at that point, in specifically in times of crisis, and the media made that focus very very clear, and it means as well that the de facto commander in chief when it comes to military crisis and when it comes to issues relating to the military is also something that lands in the hands of the prime minister ample examples we can think of here include tony blair and the invasion of iraq we also have margaret thatcher and the 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 the, the falklands war we could even go as far back to talking about people such as Anthony Eden and the Suez Crisis, and also when we think about um, when we think about Winston Churchill and the Second World War. All of these show that the the main political leader of uh, at the time during these crises are the prime minister, and so it therefore means that they act as a de facto commander in chief. The third role of the Prime Minister involves the appointment of the government. The Prime Minister, owing to the fact that they are the leader of the government as well as the leaders of the political party, will determine the membership of his or her cabinet. When the Prime Minister appoints and dismisses cabinet members, uh, we have a process known as a cabinet reshuffle. Now, cabinet reshuffles tend to happen quite regularly on, on this basis, and when we talk about a cabinet reshuffle, in reality, we're referring to a specific example where um, there is a major shakeup within cabinet, where essentially the prime minister makes the decision to 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 uh, to uh, essentially move and appoint and dismiss a number of cabinet ministers, where it's just one cabinet minister who resigns and then gets uh, someone else gets reappointed. We wouldn't necessarily describe this as a reshuffle reshuffles tend to be often quite large processes whereby uh, five to ten maybe even 15 cabinet members um, are all either moved around some of them are are, are fired essentially some of them have to uh, have to get dismissed by the prime minister some new uh, members are appointed and this happens as a way to sort of shake up the internal structure of government it may also happen as the result of and in response to a number of um, uh, political mishaps that may have happened during their time in office or even owing to the national crisis as well now speaking more generally about the idea of the cabinet and the role that the prime minister has in cabinet they also have the role of chairing the cabinet the prime minister will chair meetings of the cabinet um, they set the agenda and they steer meetings um, uh, quite and that's essentially it when it comes to the role that the prime minister has within cabinet he or she also makes appointments to cabinet committees and holds bilateral meetings with ministers now the the amount of time that a prime minister has uh, s that spends with cabinet has actually been on the decline for the last 20 or 30 or so years which is an interesting uh, fact to uh, know. And depending on the prime minister we're talking about will depend on the particular style of cabinet that they um, adopt. So, for example, David Cameron, when, uh, when he was prime minister within the coalition government, would often hold uh, conservative member only cabinet meetings before meetings of the whole cabinet with the conservatives and the liberal democrats. This was his style of cabinet meetings. In addition to this, if we think about Tony Blair, he would prefer to hold bilateral meetings with ministers, opting instead for what became coined the idea of sofa government. And so he was actually quite um, sceptical or he was not a big fan of the use of cabinet, big cabinet minister ministerial meetings. The prime minister also manages the executive. The prime minister is responsible for the overall organization of government and is of course the head of the civil service he or she can create or merge government departments and reform the civil service we see this when we see the creation of a government department for the exiting of the european union we have a new we had a new minister um, for uh, essentially tasked with the job of managing the issue of brexit now, this was a job that was split among, uh, ultimately among three individuals during the height of the Brexit process. It was partly done by the Prime Minister, partly done by the Foreign Secretary, and also partly done by the Secretary of State for exiting the European Union. 
which of course is not necessarily a good thing to have a fragmentation of roles and leadership. The Prime Minister also, owing to the fact that the Prime Minister sits within Parliament, draws uh, government ministers from Parliament and is also held accountable to Parliament, therefore has to manage relations with Parliament. The Prime Minister makes statements to and answers, answers questions in the House of Commons. So the House of Commons questions that the Prime Minister will be tasked with occur on a regular basis at noon on a Wednesday. These are known as Prime Minister's questions. Uh, but they are also called to the House of Commons to answer specific questions on specific issues where the House of Commons sees that that is necessary and therefore schedules uh, a, 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 a session in to that particular issue. They also shape government legislative programs as well. 